Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, looking back at the at the film on Saturday, uh, a couple things really uh, showed up. Uh, one, we played really physical, really hard. We competed really well. I thought uh, did some really good things uh, up front on the offensive line. Uh, did you know when a kid rushes for over 200 yards, you're doing some really good things, and we stayed committed to the run. That was something that was really going to be important to us was staying committed to the run. Um, so that we could keep the ball as long as we kept it. Uh, and then uh, uh, on defense, uh, a couple of turnovers were huge. I thought the play that Des Purnell made um, when they were driving uh, to score again uh, was a huge play in, in plus territory to get that ball back. A uh, play by Jacob Parrish, uh, getting an interception was, was really good. I, I, our, our front um, seven is playing really well. We're still... Um, we're playing hard in the secondary. We're making some plays. We're not making probably as many as we would like to make. Um, and still our focus is, it needs to be on eliminating the explosive play. And that's what uh, some of the things that we're going to do this week um, with our practices. We'll have some good on good K-State versus K-State. We'll have some young guys K-State versus K-State. And we'll also push the envelope and start working on some Oklahoma State. Sean Ward, RJ Garcia, do you think you'll have those two back? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, neither one practiced yesterday, uh, but uh, our hope is that both of them are back at least sometime limited, either today, tomorrow, or Thursday, the three days we're practicing. And some guys that are kind of playing through some pain right now, do you decelerate those guys a little bit this week? Yeah, it, yeah. you have to try to get healthy. This is our one shot at trying to get ourselves as healthy as we can, but we also need – you know, continuity with the O-line, you know, it'd be easy to say we should shelve Duff. You can't. He needs continuity um, with the offensive line. It'd be easy to say let's give uh, Austin Moore and Dez all the time off. They need continuity with uh, with Jake Clifton. Um, and so we won't probably have as, as many reps for those guys because of, of the young guys' work that we'll do in the middle of practice, but they're also not going to have – what they've typically had on a Saturday of getting a lot of that time off. When asked, you kind of alluded to it there. Are there any true freshmen that you might push a little bit more these next two weeks to be ready for more action? Um, yeah, I mean, we're going to push them all. Uh, Austin remains the easy one that uh, I thought played really well on Saturday, fit in well. Um, we're going to push them, push all these young players because whether it's on special teams or a spot spot player on offense or defense uh, at a variety of spots, um, we're looking at some other guys to be able to contribute. On Saturday, a big chunk of your receiving targets were running back or tight ends. What do you have to do to kind of get the receivers more involved? Um, well, you know, whatever the defense has given us is, is part of it because uh, we do have some talented tight ends. Um, and we've we've probably spread the ball around to all positions uh, pretty well this year throughout. Uh, I, I think we've got to continue to find some things, whether it's out of motions or stacks and and packs or, or condensed splits to try to get a little bit more easy or free releases on things, uh, as well as maybe try to get some easy throws. We thought we had some, some easy throws that maybe um, we – played the other side rather than playing that side. But uh, I've got confidence in, in our receivers. You know, it, didn't, it didn't help not having RJ. Uh, I still think Jaden's playing really well. We just got to make sure that he stays healthy. Phillip's playing really well. We've got to get RJ and Keegan back healthy. And finally, what, what level of capacity are you at? How much better can you get? Oh, I, I, we need to, we need to get a lot better and we have the ability to get a lot better across across the board. Even, you know, I, I think we're playing well at linebacker, but I think we can get continue to get better. I think we're really playing well at defensive end, but you know, somebody like Duke could say I missed a sack that I probably could have had. I think across the board um, there's not a position that we're saying we're, we've maxed we've maxed out uh, or peaked, and that's what we talked about here uh, in the team meeting on Monday. Is had a really good win over a really good UCF team, but we're not playing at all to where we think we need to to be consistent in this league uh, or um, to go where we want to go. We've everybody's got to play a little bit better. What do you think the plan is for Jake Clifton at linebacker once he gets totally up to speed? You know, uh, he's going to have to be that Swiss Army knife. He really is. Uh, we've got Austin and Dez that are playing really high level right now. Uh, and then uh, 
you know, we're putting an awful lot on a true freshman in Austin Romaine, but he can handle it. Bo Palmer, I think, is getting better and better. He's made some tackles on special teams that, that we know that he's fully back from his injury. So I think Jake's going to have to be a guy, maybe it's a third down inside backer, maybe it's a base down outside backer, something that we had some discussion about uh, on Sunday of how we can best utilize him. Uh, we're fortunate because he's kind of like Cooper Beebe on offense. He can play multiple spots, uh, and he's probably going to play as much as Des and, and, and Austin, but he might be playing all three positions. If all goes well this week, could Keegan be back? Well, we hope so. Him? Yeah, that's the that's the hope and that's the plan. We'd say that with Keegan, and we'd say that with RJ. You know, we RJ got nicked up in the middle of the week. It wasn't a game injury, um, and he thought he could go. We we warmed him up, uh, and he just couldn't couldn't go as as he needed to or wanted to. So, rather than risking anything, we we sat him down and and uh, um, used Keegan, used Seth a little bit more. Um, but we need all those guys back. What's the main thing you stress um, as a defensive coach when it comes to shutting down explosive plays? Eyes, eyes and technique. You know, we're, we're capable, fully capable. We've got good enough players back there. You can't, you can't fall asleep uh, with your technique. You can't fall asleep with your eyes. You can't assume you see something. You truly have to see it. And sometimes, you know, it's it, it's maybe a, a split second lack of focus that. Split second lack of focus on an O-line or D-lineman, you might give up a tackle for loss. Split second on a secondary or a wide receiver, it probably goes the other way for a pick uh, or it goes for a big play. And, and um, they're all correctable errors. That's, that's, the, that's the thing over the last couple of weeks. They're all correctable errors now. For us, we just have to be able to correct them because I think we have a chance to be a, a really good defense. Uh, I think we are a really good rush defense. We've just got to complement that now by eliminating the explosives in the pass game. One more, sorry. But when you look back at the the box score and see that DJ gets 30 carries, 10 targets, is there any part of you that says maybe that's a little too much? Probably, but I did not realize that at the time either, that he was getting that much. Uh, But I didn't realize – I knew we had time of possession. Uh, I didn't realize we had 20-some more plays than they did, you know. Uh, Because sometimes when you're giving up big plays like we were, you feel like you're out there forever, but you really, in reality, you're not. Um, But I think it was good for us to see that he could handle that. Uh, He he was fine. Uh, He was a little bit sore, but he he felt great uh, on on Monday. Um, But getting Treshawn back, the other one is Anthony Frias did some good things. We were excited about Anthony, and Anthony just needs repetition more in practice um, so that he has confidence and we have confidence in the game. He made a couple of really good plays, made a really nice run, made a great catch. Um, and, uh, you know, you hope you don't have to have that because that's hard for DJ, even though he's a bigger back, to have that much uh, load week in and week out. Does a bye week give you, uh, uh, allow you the opportunity to review protocols with, like, I think you played with 10 at Missouri on mm-hmm. one play, uh, that having two eights on yep. the field at the same time? Yeah, you shouldn't have to have a bye week to do those things. That that's normal football. That that's an error on our part as coaches. That you know we talk about how we clean those things up. Um, you know, for us, a bye week is continuing to develop guys. That's our number one thing. We're going to always be a developmental program. That's why you see a guy like Des Purnell playing at a high level like he is now is because he took advantage of those situations. Carver Willis took advantage of those situations. DJ Giddens took advantage of those situations where you weren't the main guy and you got a chance to practice uh, our stuff, not off of a card, not off of a a scouting report, but just K-State versus K-State. That's the number one thing for us in an open week is to keep finding more and more players, maybe for 23, maybe for 24. And then... uh, kind of reassess where we're at from a scouting report standpoint. Are we doing too many things out of this formation? What are we doing on first and 10 uh, on a play calling either side of the ball, as well as kind of shore up all the uh, the special teams, whether it's alignment errors, assignment errors. And, you know, there's only so much time, but, you know, practicing uh, an onside kick where they don't onside kick it and they kick it deep like they did to Phil. Um, doing those doing those situations, punting it from uh, out of back of our own end zone. I mean, we're just trying to you try to hit every area you can, 
but you also got to do what we talked about when we first started here was how do you keep Austin Moore, Cooper Beebe, those type of guys fresh. And was there a particular emphasis that allowed Jake Clifton to get back on the field so quickly? Um, great training staff for starters, great doctors that uh, performed the procedure, and a kid that uh, really worked his tail off that, that didn't want to miss very much football. And uh, my hat's off to our docs and our athletic trainers and to Jake because they can put everything out there as protocols, but that kid worked his butt off. And he didn't want – we we assumed it was going to be uh, Oklahoma State after the bye week. But uh, with the things that he did and the things that Mindy and her staff did with him, um, she came to me on Wednesday and said, there's a chance this kid can give you a few snaps. And lo and behold – he gave us a handful of snaps that were really good, as well as some special teams ones. 36 tackles for loss in four games is an incredible pace. Yep. Even a number of that size. You know you have some dudes, right? Yep. But is that still a surprising number? Um, it is. It's it's great. Uh, we talked about that. Coach Klanerman did with the defensive staff that were on pace to, to – to, um, really be disruptive, uh, and whether it's sacks, whether it's pressures on quarterbacks uh, to tackles for loss, we have disruptive guys up front. Um, but you can't uh, have all those great things happen and then give up explosives afterwards. So they have to be hand-in-hand hand as far as if we can – continue to do those things because last year we weren't doing those things we had a lot more third and threes and second and fours and now we're into uh, right now second and longs and some third and, and long but you still can't give up the big, big plays after that but um, uh, you know it's it's a little bit of what we're doing on some changes defensively to be more aggressive and the fact that you hit it on the head we got some really good players up front and you've said in past seasons you like to see more stops on third down of course but how have you felt about Defense on third down and offense converting third downs. Um, we've been we've been good. Um, we've been uh, really good uh, on third down right now, especially on um, offensively staying on the field. That's how you you win the the uh, the time of possession battle. And on defense, I know that uh, we're always striving to be to be better. You know, you can't give up a third and twenty like we did. Uh, but we're we're winning on some third downs. We're winning on some fourth downs. I, I think the one thing that we talked about early in the season, and it has to continue for us, is our red zone efficiency on offense. And we're, we're getting touchdowns in the red zone and not having to settle for as many field goals. And that's a, um, that's really good play calling by Colin and the design of things, as well as having an experienced quarterback that knows where to get the football to. After getting to kind of look at the film <clears throat> from last game, special teams wise what what's kind of your overall view and then what what kind of do you want to hone in on yeah. during the, the uh, next everything we've got to hone in on. we've been we've been good and we weren't as good uh on um on saturday and you can look at two easy things we can't miss a short field goal can't miss a pat those are those are things that uh i believe are correctable what what makes it worse on the special teams in my mind is we had two major penalties that you can't have. We have really good field position. Uh, you know, that was a team that was going to rugby punt, roll the punter out. It's going to be hard to get a return. It's going to be even harder to get a block. So you have to get possession, get what you can get, and get the offense on the field. Well, we do that uh, and get a nice return by Phil, but we have a holding penalty, so it gets us pushed back. Um, we have a decent return by Seth in the kick return game where we're going to start it around the 30-yard line, and instead we're starting at the 12 because we have – those are the things that we have to avoid, absolutely have to avoid. Now, on the positive side of things, um, we challenged Jack Bloomer. Luckily, we only punted it once. They had a great design and scheme um, to try to decoy everybody to one side and have somebody that wasn't aligned outside but was lined in the core loop back around, be the only guy to, def to get the ball, and essentially it could be a one-on-one -on -one or a one-on-zero. But the old crafty veteran, Randon Plattner, figured it all out and went down there. And by the time, because Jack punted it so well, the kid had to go way back and field it on, on the roll. So by that time, we had probably had enough people over there to be able to at least stop it from being a huge, huge play. But uh, Randon, he told me that's his second big-time tackle here. 
um, that I forgotten I had forgotten about one because I said it was a great first tackle you had. And he goes, whoa, 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 Coach. Uh, I, I had a big one against Iowa State last year. And so I'll, I'll have to go back and look at that. But um, he made a great play. And it started with the punt uh, that, uh, that Jack had. But uh, that was a huge play. So... Um, I would. We got to get better on special teams for sure. From what we did Saturday, but overall, collectively, we've been pretty good. But when you have a special play like that, I want to make sure it gets noticed. So does Rand. What's the biggest thing you want Will to focus on in, in this? Not this forcing week? it. You know, there were some uh, throws that uh, you know. It's easy to say that when we're sitting here on on uh, on, a, on a Tuesday, or I'm standing on the sidelines, or you guys are in the press box, and there's not kids flying at you of Man, you could have played that side, and you end up choosing to play this side. You know, those things go through your mind as well as, you know what? It's first and ten. Don't knife it in there. Let's throw it away. We'll get to second and ten, and not. We've got to, we've got to eliminate the turnover that we've had, and and he's always overcome it because he's made ten times more plays um, with his legs, with his arm, than the than the one mistake he's made each game. Uh, and I thought their kid did a great job beating us to the spot and making a making a really good pick. Um, but that's something we have to avoid. But I, I also got to be careful of, I, yeah, I don't want him to do that, don't want him to make those mistakes, but his aggressiveness is what's led to us getting so many points. If you went all off season thinking you were going to be able to count on Keegan Johnson and Garrett Oakley being considerable weapons, yep. You lose them right before the season. Did that kind of throw things upside down for the offense? Well, it just put more pressure on Senate and more pressure on us trying to find ways to get the ball to Ben um, and then uh, probably put a lot of reps and, and miles on, on Phil uh, and on RJ. The, the, not the huge surprise, but the really good surprise was how much Jaden had improved. And Jaden Jackson's a really good receiver, so that – we were probably able to find Jaden when Keegan got hurt. Um, getting Oakley back will help us, you know, because he's uh, – and he was you know, probably 85% on on uh, Saturday. He'll be 100% by the time we get to um, the game as long as there's no setbacks. And um, Will Swanson's playing really well. Uh, so it just gives us another another body out there that can, that can stretch the field. Flashes from Oakley. What is that ceiling of potential? Since yeah. we haven't seen a lot of them yet. Yeah, um, it's really good. It's uh, it's a guy that can really run. Uh, he's physical at the point of attack. Uh, he catches the ball well. Uh, he's just learning our offense. You know, he j he's a redshirt freshman that missed a, a good chunk of time during fall camp, uh, and and that's that's difficult to to be able to get all those reps back just in the month of September. But uh, we're hope no, that there's a week. For these two weeks for him, where he needs all the reps now that he's back healthy, we've got to get him out there. You talked about uh, Christian Duffy needing work with the yep. the ones, but how how would you assess his first game back? Did you feel like there was a lot of rust, or did he? There was a little bit of rust, but um, you know he's another guy that's played so much football that he was able to overcome some things because he just understands how an alignment is. Uh, what a picture looks like that he can anticipate some things. Um, we Duff uh, played more plays than we thought he probably would, but once again, we had 80, 80 plays plus, so um, he was going to probably have more than that 25 or, or, th or 30 we wanted him to have. Him getting over that soreness, him getting over that first game of I'm okay, I'm back, now he's got two weeks to continue to build the strength in his legs so that um, – um, he can be the Christian Duffy of old. You feel like he came through that in pretty good shape. He, he did. Yep. He was. He'll practice today. He goes. I was sore because it was just like the first fall camp practice that you have because of all the contact that you get. But uh, um, he'll practice today and be ready to roll.